In this video, I'll show you the secrets and tricks on how to achieve photorealistic underwater scenes in Blender. With these tricks, I was able to make this animation you see, and I'm surprised myself at how well it works and holds up. So if you're interested in all that, stick around, maybe subscribe, and let's get on with it. So after a very immersive experience watching Avatar The Way of Water, I was inspired by the complexity of CG water in the movie, and this got me all hyped up for trying to do something similar in Blender. Obviously, I don't have the giant technology and computing power to simulate physically accurate fluids like how Avatar does it, but I have figured out a couple of Blender tricks to create the illusion of a real looking shot. So the first thing is to understand the aspects of an underwater shot. Most underwater videos are actually filmed near the surface because there's a lot of light, and this means a lot of times you're seeing the underside of the water surface. Luckily, Blender has a convenient ocean modifier that we can add to our plane, and you'll see there are adjustable settings to control aspects such as the wave size and depth. The important thing to get right is always the scale. As for ocean detail, that's determined by these resolution settings. I recommend working with a small number like 10 in the viewport and maybe 30 for a rendering. Now, if you want to animate the ocean, just keyframe the time setting into something that looks right. To see this thing in color, well, it's water, right? So it's either see-through or reflective. And since we're looking from below, you'd mostly expect to see through to the sky. So to do that, you want to find a clean HDI of a sky and use that in Blender. Now, all we need to do is add a refraction shader to our ocean, and you can see that this is starting to work. Oh, also, you probably want to disable shadows on the ocean plane. This is because we don't want it to block any light from above, so our underwater scene gets as much light as possible, which is good for rendering. I'd also recommend adding a subject. In my case, I added a shark. This can help us easily compare to our references and helps us in our process of making a good looking shot. Before doing anything else, let's add in a sunlight so we have interactive lighting instead of just an HDRI. Let's also maybe add a dark dome so our HDRI isn't lighting our scene from below. Now, the ocean is very dense, and to recreate that, we can put in a large cube and add a principled volume shader, and then dial in the color and density into something that looks realistic. Remember to look at reference. I found that 0.5 density works pretty well. A good trick is to also turn up your anisotropy up to around 0.7. This changes how light reacts with the volume and concentrate it nearer the surface like water. That's also a good time to set up a camera and focus on your subject. Particularly, you want to lower the FOV and get in close so the density of the volumetric is lower when you're closer. Now we move on to the hardest part of recreating underwater shots, and that is the water caustics. Simulating caustics are known for being some of the most expensive and demanding tasks ever for computer graphics. Luckily, a popular 3D YouTuber, Polyford, has come up with an amazing trick to imitate good-looking caustics using nothing but Voronoi textures and math. You can check him out for the full tutorial on it, but I'll sum it up. You create a new material on a plane, combine two Voronoi textures with a mixed RGB set to difference. And since they're identical and there's no difference, you'll need to offset one by adding more value. Connect the mix to an emission output. Now there's a few more tweaks we can do like controlling the difference with the color ramp to give the caustic more detail. And finally, the idea is to copy this caustic node setup, create a strong spotlight, enable shader nodes, and paste in our caustic setup here. Because it's a directional light, we'll need to plug in our Voronoi to a mapping and texture coordinate linked to normal, and now we get a cool looking caustic effect where the light shines. It gets even cooler. You can animate the caustic by turning the Voronoi's 4D and keyframing its values. Also, because our spotlight is connected to our caustic and we have a volumetric, we automatically get these beautiful god rays underwater that's shifting around, and this just works for us so well. The final trick is to recreate those tiny particles found floating underwater. You can do that by setting up a cube, change viewport display to bounds, as well as give it a transparent shader. This is because we only want to set up and see the particle system. For the settings, you want to set frame start and end to 1, increase the lifetime, change source to emit from volume, go to field weights and turn off gravity and all. Then go to the velocity and turn down the normal to something like 0.15. Now we can separately create a new particle with a translucent blue shader and then in the previous particle setting, change to render as object and then select our new particle. And if you followed all the steps, there you go. Now you know the basics of how to set up an impressive looking shot underwater. Subscribe to see more videos like this. And on a similar topic, if you'd like to see my breakdown of how I built up this shipping port over water, then you can check that out right here. Thanks and I'll see you soon.